Right, OK, uh, family doctors in England have voted overwhelmingly in favour of uh, taking collective action for the first time in 60 years. Now, that means GPs will be able to pick and choose from a menu of actions set out by the British Medical Association. Lucky them. Yeah, GPs could also elect to stop performing work they are not formally contracted to do. Let's talk to the former CEO of the Royal College of Nursing, Dr Peter Carter. Good to see you this morning, Peter. What do we make of this? I mean, heck, they're not going to get a lot of public sympathy because most of us can't get an appointment when we need one anyway. True. Well, this is a tragic state of affairs all round. And um, it's a matter of huge regret that we're in this very difficult situation. Now, what I would urge is that the BMA and the government get together and try to navigate their way through this situation because it's only going to lead to more harm. Uh, now, GPs will say, and I have a lot of sympathy for them, they're under huge pressure. There's massive strain in the system. And this problem, the gestation of this, has been going on for many years. Now, I'm not being political on this, but you've got a new government only a few weeks in. Let's give them a chance and let's see if they can do something over the coming period to try to find a way forward, which on one hand gives primary care the more investment that they undoubtedly need, whilst at the same time not damaging patient care. Peter, can you just sum up for me? I mean, I haven't seen my GP for three years, so I'm hardly going to notice the difference, to be honest with you, because it's impossible to get an appointment where I live. What is their main complaint? What are they... What do they want? What are they complaining about? Well, GPs are the front door to the NHS, and general practice has been under strain for many, many years. This is not a new problem at all. And what they're saying is that they've been underinvested in compared to the rest of the healthcare system. And what they want is more investment in order to not only get more GPs in, but you also need the whole association of other members of staff, such as practice nurses and allied health professions, in order to ameliorate the strain and the pressure that are on the current services. And what they're saying is that they've just run out of patience. Now, I do understand that, but with a government that's only been in post for about a month, I do think it would be wise to say, OK, this is our, uh, our, our fallback position. Let's get together and let's see if we can negotiate something so that we get a long-term plan to get this investment in. Because one of the things that we just keep talking about is that the pressure on the NHS, so much of it is because of lifestyle-induced in illnesses and conditions. And what we've got to do is we've got to get upstream to stop people becoming ill in the first place. And general practice is at the forefront of helping people with their lifestyle to stop these illnesses developing. Now, the problem is, if people stop coming, if, if GPs say, look, we're going to cap the number of patients we're going to see, then there's a number of consequences to that. First is more and more people will start going to A&E departments, mm -hmm. and A&E departments over the country are already overwhelmed. And you see long waits, you see ambulances stacking up, so it's going to make a bad situation even worse. Or the other consequence is that someone's got a lump or a bump or they think something's wrong, and they decide not to go to their <laughs> GP, and they end up not getting assessed, and then, way downstream, you suddenly discover that that was a cancerous growth that was developing. But because you didn't get in to see the GP, it's not been treated, mm. and you can understand the consequences of that. Yeah, sadly, you can. Uh, mm. Peter Carter, good to see you this morning. Thank Thanks you. very much indeed. I'd love your thoughts on that, gbnews.com yes. slash you'll say. I just... I, it strikes me as, as political opportunism because um, obviously the government has made this generous offer to try and stop all the strikes mm. uh, with junior doctors. I think it was 22%. It, if they just thought, well, now's the time to, to jump in on this. It's just, I understand they need more support and more health and probably restructuring, all the, which the government has said it's going to do. But the idea of, of limiting numbers and all the rest of it that, that these GPs want to do now at a time when we cannot get appointments. It's not going to help the pressure they're under, is it? It's just going to no. cause more pressure. And, you know, we had someone in our family who needed a lump or a bump checked out, turned out to be cancer, 
But we had to, oh, luckily enough, we could afford it. We could afford to pay the 150 quid to go private and mm. get that checked out. Otherwise, that person would be an even bigger burden on the NHS and possibly not even with us now. Mm. I'm sorry, a lot of you are probably feeling very angry about this, especially the, the, the Daily Mail has put it this way. You know, some GPs, only some, earn up to £700,000, and that's according to NHS data.